My name is Kenny Kim. I'm a lifelong martial artist. And my mission is to travel the world, find people, and share stories of how jiu-jitsu has impacted their lives. I'm headed to Orlando, Florida to meet a legend in the sport, Master Ricardo Liborio. He was one of the greatest to ever compete, coach, and now he is taking jiu-jitsu to the next level at the University of Central Florida. Orlando, here we go. So we're on the road. Uh, we got to Laboria because uh, of Charleston, Maliki. My buddy Maliki, you know, we did our second episode over there. My name is Maliki Friedman. I'm a Ricardo Laborio black belt. Thanks, Maliki. I see uh, Ricardo as a total package. I see him as a great predator, great teacher, and a amazing leader that he's become and going forward. Yeah, he's one of the guys, pioneers who you know, brought Jiu-Jitsu to life, I should say. This is gonna be an incredible story, I can feel it. A great intake on not only the history of Jiu-Jitsu, but like the future of Jiu-Jitsu, because that's exactly what he's doing. Hey, Ricardo, how are you? Very good, Kenny. How are you? I'm well, man. Uh, I'm excited to get down there and uh, spend the weekend. We're um, about four and a half, five hours away, and then we'll be coming up to the, the school to uh, get the day started. That'll be awesome, though. It'll be awesome. There's never a dull moment with the Matt May crew. With all the traveling we've been doing, it's been fun hanging out during these long road trips. I'm here at UCF, which is the largest university in the United States. They have a jiu-jitsu club where the students and even some of the doctors train, and also offer jiu-jitsu as an accredited class with Professor Master Leboy. Teaching is my passion, but also being a student, that's a lifelong dream, because we're always a student. We're always learning, we're always evolving, whether it's on the mats or off the mats. So with Master Leboy, I aspire to be someone like him as I get a little bit older. I want to have the same poise. I want to have the same passion still for the art and the same heart. I got the underhook. I got the overhook. I'm going to step with the back leg right here. Step and move. You see this underhook over here. I'm stepping and I'm moving this way. Today we're working top positions at top submissions from side control, scarf hold, north-south, ready mount, mount positions, and the submissions that go around this. Single leg, double leg. Got it? So it's part of a curriculum. We have the whole entire curriculum that we have to go through it. They have a, a quiz and a final exam. First time in a university training jiu-jitsu. First time in a university for anything, but training jiu-jitsu on the mats here at University of Central Florida, it's actually pretty cool. First time for everything, right? The objective here is actually introduce this to the rest of the world. This is a form of the therapy. And that's what it is. And when you come to the club and you feel that you're welcome, it doesn't matter if you're the toughest guy in the world, but we care about your, your, your essence, you know, your core. Belonging, that's it, that's the word, belonging. They feel that they belong. That's why it's special. My name is Armand Badjudin. I'm currently a kinesiology master's student, and I am the president of BJJ at UCF. It's a, we're an official club <laughs> sponsored by UCF, but nice. um, there is no credit involved. It's, it's mainly okay. uh, come come if you want. Right. Yeah. But I mean, just the fact that if you are going to do the academic class and get credit for it, why oh, not have? Why not? Exactly. Why not participate and actually, you know what I mean? I yeah. agree. Uh, and that's why our, our numbers have skyrocketed. We've gotten over, I believe, 400 people. Armand was one of the founding members of the BJJ club here at UCF. Master Laboria took Armand under his wings 
I knew what I didn't know, right? And I needed guidance. So I was looking for a mentor or someone to really help coach the club because I can be the president, the president can be the coach, but Laborio and I sought each other out and we found each other at the perfect time. When Lebo came in, Lebo was like, "Now nah, listen, we're gonna we're gonna make this all inclusive, make it as friendly as beginner friendly to everyone as possible. We want the beginners here, you know what I mean? We want everyone to feel welcome. Between the classes and the club itself, the word spread out. It's really special to me. I have kids from graduations that four years ago, they still send me messages. So I think we're changing a lot of lives, you know, we're touching a lot of lives. A few months in, I, I learned this guy's real deal. He's trained world champions. He's a living legend. And just it just adds that wow factor. He's stunned so much. He's so cool. And he's just a dad. He's somebody you look up to. So Professor Laborio, or he just lets us call him Lebo, he's been a great influence on my life as a whole. Training with him has been the main reason that I've kept training. Uh, he's always positive, always encouraging. But his knowledge is also just so deep. So I've been training kind of as I've moved around to different towns, trained at different places, found my way back to Orlando, my position at the university, and then found uh, Master Laborio. And ever since then, just been by his side and taken the opportunity and, and kind of the serendipity to be placed at, a, at an institution where he's a faculty member and teaching at. I think that that's really helped with a lot of the stress and anxiety that all of us have experienced over the last couple of years through the pandemic. Yes. All of that exercise afterwards, you rolled five hard rounds with your buddies. You're just sitting there drenched in sweat, taking a breath. You're looking around you're like, man, I, I feel good. My name is Adam Golden. I'm a physician here at the University of Central Florida. I've been practicing since 1994 when I graduated medical school. And I mostly do internal medicine, geriatrics, and palliative care. Been on the mat since 1996. Wow. As a geriatrician, you know, I read a lot about anti-aging, you know, the molecular biology of aging, and, and I see a lot of products out there and a lot of people come to me with their ideas. But I really think the Gracies really, Elio and Carlos figured a lot of this out about 100 years ago. It's about moderation and lifestyle. It's about diet, exercise. And I think that the jujitsu allows you to work on flexibility, strength, endurance, all three with the right instructors, you're in a pretty safe environment. Sure. I feel like Lebo's really doing something spectacular here with the university. Sure. For someone at his level to get that enthused about teaching beginners. So I really take my hat off to him. He's really actually made the whole sport progress. The club just symbolizes the results of a passion that we have. But I think there is a space starting in the United States to replicate what we have here at UCF. Imagine if it, in every state we have two universities like this. Let's say in one year, two years, 50 states, 100 universities doing what are we doing here right now? I'm gonna be walking away today with a new sense of goals because I see what he has accomplished here at UCF. We're gonna make this thing go all over the United States, two, three universities at a time. Having Kenny here, man, symbolize a lot because Kenny is a tough guy, kind guy, humility, discipline, all the things together that the sports can go. Kenny symbolized this a lot. Kenny has the synergy on that. So far, this morning has been great. Besides the, the technical aspects of what we're teaching, it's all about being a great leader. That leader is gonna make the next generation of whether it's athletes, students, children, the best they can be. With Master Laborio, I had great training. I learned a lot from him. And I'm, I'm actually very excited to see what we have in store the rest of the day. I'm sure it's gonna be full of surprises. That's what it's been. We have been training all day here at UCF. And I'm starving. I've been missing Mama Kim's home cooking. So before Levo's Brazilian barbecue, I got to find me some Korean barbecue. What's up, guys? I'm here in Orlando. Korean barbecue restaurant called Shinjong. They've been open since 1993, and everything is homemade, authentic, just like my mom. I don't know if it's gonna be good as my mom, but we'll see. Look, I got the Korean barbecue table set, traditional soju ready, can't drink too much. I know I have a barbecue coming up with uh, Master Laborio on Saturday, that's the Brazilian barbecue, but this is the Korean barbecue. We're we'll gonna see who has the better barbecue. It's, it's, a, it's a barbecue off. <laughs> this is what we call panchan. This is the side dishes that you get in all the, the Korean meals. The hot radish, you got the pickled onions, you got the potato salad, you got the bean sprout, you got the fish cake, and then you got uh, 
this concoction of I don't I don't really know, but it tastes good. Ready? Oh, they got the good chopsticks too. How to tell if the restaurant is authentic? If the punch on here, if the side dishes are good, you're at the right place. So here we go. Just the right amount of crunch, right amount of uh, spiciness. Rice only fills you up, so you don't eat it. And this is how you open the rice bowl, right? If you open it, you start eating the rice sticks, right? So what you do is you close it, you shake it up, flip it upside down, flip it back, boom, the rice doesn't stick. Yep, put it back, turn it back, you're ready to eat. Ah. Uh, <laughs> In tradition, you're not supposed to pour the shot by yourself, but just for TV. Guys, cheers, guys. Hey, man, made. Oh. The meat is here, guys. This is Naya. So this is the pork belly. But it's the most famous cut. This is the spicy pork chicken, hot chicken. This is silken tofu with some seafood. Got some clams, maybe squid. It's hot, but this is what you're supposed to eat. piece of lettuce, a few pieces of meat like this, garlic, you wrap it up, and then you just stuff your face, it's not fruit. Shot. There's no room for Brazilian barbecue, this is it. Contest over. Let's see if my master laboyos Brazilian barbecue stacks up to this. I don't know about this on If you guys are in Orlando, make sure you visit Xinjiang Korean Barbecue. This is the spot. Today, I get the opportunity to meet Ricardo's wife, Misty, and his daughter, Bella, at the Avalon School of Music. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Bella, I'm Kenny. Hi, good how are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, how are you? She's getting voice lessons today, and I get to sit in and watch. How long have I been taking voice lessons? Uh huh. Uh, since we moved here in third grade, so probably like five, almost six years maybe. Oh wow, okay. Ricardo and his wife, Misty, I think they go above and beyond for the development of Bella. When you care and show love and foster a loved one, it's limitless on what they can do. voice was like an angel. It sounded, I, I closed my eyes for a few seconds just to take in what was going on. I literally felt like I was in a concert with an opera singer. Violette, violette, graziose, rocciotose, otorose, violette, violette, graziose, violette, violette, graziose. Yes! <laughs> Good job, you remember this one. Yeah, I'm surprised I did. That was amazing. Yeah, so that's the Italian that we were I don't speak Italian, Italian, but that sounded pretty good to me. Yes. <laughs> this opportunity of visiting Bella here at her voice lesson, this was something new for me. This was something exciting. It touched my heart. So now we're headed to Master Laborio's house. I'm in a car riding with him to his house. I'm asking him why he left his home for many years in Boca Raton. The answer that I got was something that I never imagined. Something big happened in the American Top Team? Yeah, there are a couple things that happened there, but 
Because you're the main, you know, you're the name. You were basically the name. Of what happened was Bella. Ah, uh, okay. Really, the main reason behind all this? It was Bella. Bella lost her vision because mm -hmm. there was a problem on uh, on a soft spot of the head. Mm -hmm. Was that when she was a? Uh... She was one and a half years old. Oh wow! Yeah. You know, she, so she wasn't she, born like that. No, no, she wasn't born like that. She went up into a Cuban doctor, Doctor Israel, in Miami Children's Hospital. Okay. Your daughter has a condition called cranial stenosis. Is the is the sutures on the head? You know, the soft spot in the head fused before time. Ah. And they all fused. Mm -hmm. And the skull grew a healthy brain, which is a good thing. Right, but right. It grew inside a, a, a small skull, and the brain started coming down to the spine ah. and compressed the optic nerve. And that's why she ended up, ah. like, you know. The struggle, which is the worst part of my life, it was, it was yeah. there by far. And if it wasn't for jujitsu, mm -hmm. And particularly learning this thing about accepting losing but not being defeated. You know, right, this thing about right, right, you're not right. giving up. Right. And you're, as much as you lose, if you keep the faith, you keep yeah. on going, mm -hmm. you know. But I guarantee you, man, that jujitsu was brilliant to me, man. It was so important, not as just a therapy, but but a whole character build mm -hmm. and, and accepting without you know, quitting. Right. You don't right. feel like, man, mm -hmm. that's it. You know? Yeah. Now is your golden ticket if you want to be a drunk or drug addict mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. it is. They're like, oh, my daughter. Yeah. yeah. No. No. No, it helps you. Yeah. yeah. It persevere. It makes you stronger, you know, knowing when. Like, you got to deal with it, you know? You Same gotta, thing in jiu-jitsu. You end up in a bad position. You don't give up. Such a knowledge on this. <laughs> that was my time of competition, my time in training, mm -hmm. getting smashed and losing yeah. it. And you say, all right, let's go figure it out. Yeah. Come back in the next day. You know, that's, do it again. that's what it is. Do it again. Yeah. So many people are proud of being Ricardo Laboria Black Belt. Almost all of your black belts that are like, yeah, I'm Ricardo Laboria Black Belt. Oh, man. And it's, that's, it says something about you. And it says something about it. And, and what I notice is that you lead by example. You do this, you do this, show people. You know what oh, I mean? Guys, yeah. And so. One thing, man, I like people. Yeah. And I, I can tell. And I feel. I feel good when I can help. Yeah, the way I feel, the way you feel, yep. like it brings those people. To, if not, we, we would never cross paths, you know what I mean? Yeah. But now we cross paths, yep. you know what's going to happen? We're going to keep crossing paths, we're going to keep building together, building together. 100%. You know? It's the same, it's the same goal, 100%. Yep. All right, let's get inside. Let's We went to his old office where now his wife has her art projects. He brought out a box full of stuff, one of those like treasure boxes, you know, pictures from when he was a young man competing at the highest levels, pictures with some of the, the legends of the sport when he was coming up. For him, it was just like, yeah, I have this too, I have this too. It was just more for, fun for him. And for me, it was, wow, you have all this and just tucked away in a side. So it was, it was kind of fun, it was interesting. There's one thing I don't regret is moving to Orlando. You know, I, I really like here and I love doing what I'm doing, especially right now, you know. Hey, that's, I mean, I can see that. I was talking to uh, Armand. We we're talking about the, the club at UCF and how, you know, what is it? Maybe three days out of the week you have, not actually the training part, the club part, but the actual academic part, right? Literally, you're there from like nine to three. Yep. Yeah, and you don't need to be. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you literally, like, maybe an hour, hour and a half of the uh, accredited class, that's all you need to be yeah. there for. Yeah. Um, but that's when I realized that you're doing it for the love. It's not for anything else. No, I love that. I, I know, I know. You can see it. You know what <laughs> I, I mean? Like, I hope you're not allergic to cats. It's okay. I am, but it's okay. You are. <laughs> come on, come on. Leave me. Get out of here. Come on. Get out of here. I mean, you can see yeah. it in the in the uh, students. You can see the smile. You can see the energy that that yeah. you protrude with that. I mean, like so. That being said, with this love, I mean, like, what's next? I mean, we. I think I mean, we touched base in the car talking about this. Like, even for me, my my goal was because jujitsu has helped me so much throughout my life. Made the person that I am today. Who would have thought I'd be sitting with Ricardo Laboria doing an interview? Like, who would have thought I'd be, you know, in, in his house? Who would have thought I'd be traveling around the world, eating, you know, 
barbecue cook fire <laughs> card on the memorial yeah. and uh you know uh, getting to know your story and and, and going forward right? synergy brother let's speak the same the goal is the same there for me it's like i wanted i wanted to spread this blueprint mm -hmm. of what we have in university yes. with so much love and culture we're helping so many kids man and i see this in everyday basis yeah. Yeah. And it's just fulfilling, man. It's rewarding. It's, you feel like you, man, that's, that's it. That's what, better than winning these championships, yeah. right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a good feeling to know that you're helping somebody. I'll tell you something. I, I, man, I know that I'm going to do this the rest of my life. Right. But I know, and I, I'm so glad there's one thing. Can I know what I love? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I love, love there's two things that I, I love my family yeah. and I love my work. You know, there's one thing. So you may not make that much money on this thing, but but I know that I would. Well, we're rich in life. That's what I said. We're rich in life. After a certain point, it's not about learning how to do a certain technique. It's not about winning a championship. It's not about just being successful in the business. It's about fulfilling your dream of leading the next generation of martial artists. You know, whether it's business owners, whether it's coaches, whether it's instructors, whether it's you know new students that can benefit through jujitsu. I see a potential of us working together to bring our visions together to make a better world through the martial arts. Good luck. And that's, we talk about the next step. In other sports, you invested in the youth so that at least they can get it a scholarship when they go to college. And jiu-jitsu don't have that yet. Let's build up this into a point that the kid can pass their time training to go to college and have scholarships paid for. So sitting next to him at his house, it was surreal. If I had to compare this, it'd be like sitting next to Michael Jordan at his house, having a personal conversation and him making me coffee. This opportunity is not only to empower people, it's also putting me in places that I never thought I'd imagine, that I would imagine I'd be. So I'm thankful, I'm grateful for everything that's happened. Can't wait to continue on with this project and see where it goes. All right, you ready to go? Yeah. All right, let's, let's go, go train, let's go. Let's go. We're here at Ricardo Laborio's gym, at least where he trains out of, uh, Excel Soccer Academy. Ricardo brought both Sophie and Bella onto the mat and the acceptance from the students was just amazing. This is a community, whether it's your first day, whether this is your 10th year, whether you're visually impaired, whether you're physically impaired, man, jujitsu is for everybody. Jujitsu can help you overcome so many obstacles. Like, for example, tonight, this was Sophie's first time. She's visually impaired. She's never probably even been exposed to this kind of environment where she's around 20, 30, 40, 50 people that are chattering. That's, she has no idea who they are. And she was brave enough to come up on the mat and actually work with me a little bit. So she did very well. She was attentive. She listened very well. I think her, with her senses being so heightened, she was able to adapt to all the techniques that we were working on. What if I grab you with my thumb this way? Which way? Whoa, look at that. I'm gonna push it. Oh, look at that. Get the slag over to the other side. Right leg Step. over. Boom. There you go. This one back. Now you turn it. Boom. That's it. See that there's adults that don't know nothing about this. <laughs> what are you talking there's about? There's people who train for a one month and still can't do this. I want to thank Sophie for the opportunity to work with her, giving her her first official jujitsu lesson. And I hope anybody like Sophie or anyone with any disadvantages will take the opportunity to do something to better themselves, step out of their comfort zone. Don't let your disadvantages be a hinder on what you want to accomplish. As a teacher, as an as a instructor, as a coach, I have more respect for Ricardo because he has worked with his daughter. He has worked with some of the beginners, even at UCF, working with some of these brand new college students that has no previous training at all. And he has the patience, he has the poise to lead the class and make them into a better person. Ricardo, he comes from behind, he says, let's do this, which usually means let's start to train. We start off very slowly and that's how we usually do it, especially if you're going with somebody as legendary as he is. There's nothing that you're gonna try to do that he's not gonna know. This is a great time. I'm, I'm actually trying to see what he's doing. I'm like, let me see, I'm looking at, okay, he's doing this, he's making this grip, he's doing this. I'm trying to learn from what he's doing. So there's several times that he started on his back, he swept me a couple of times. 
I try to sweep him up, come to the top. It was just a technical battle that we were having going back and forth. I know he said he hasn't trained in a while, but I couldn't tell. He, he, he kept it 100 and he was on top of his game. I'll keep this feeling and memory for the rest of my life. That'll probably be the highlight for the next at least few years, you know? So I had a great time and I learned a lot training with him today. And at the end, we, we hugged it out and we basically said, this is the synergy. This is the energy that we want to share with people. And Master Laboria and I have the same kind of vision as to where we want to take the future of jiu-jitsu. We're here in Old Town in Orlando. I've got the crew, we're walking around. Ricardo is actually getting ready for the barbecue. It's gonna be a big barbecue today with all the UCF students, a bunch of his black holes flying in from out of town. We're gonna get ready for that, but before we hit up the barbecue, we see Extreme Ninja Challenge. And I know what it is. I've seen it on TV. I'm always up for a challenge. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy. It wasn't pretty. This is Extreme Ninja Challenge at Old Town. What we're doing here is getting people moving again. With the pandemic, everybody was at a standstill. So now, you know, people are getting out there, they're having more fun, they're coming down to Florida, and we want them to stop by Extreme Ninja Challenge to play. This is a place to play. So adults can do it, kids can do it. We have uh, obstacles that you see featured on American Ninja Warrior. So you see it on the show and you think you can do it. And sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. It's like going on, coming out to the mat. <laughs> about. So I'm here sizing everything up. It looks pretty easy. And I have one crew member, Nick. He was a high school wrestler. He's always talking trash to me. So I'm going to call him out today. I'm going to see what he really has. Come up here, do this with me. Nick, you're the guy. You've been talking a lot of trash. Give me that camera. Come on, Nick. Right. You're on the ropes. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Come on, Nick. Got it. Watching Nick, I don't know, it's kind of shaky. So I'm going to have to see how he does on the rings. I think I have the edge on. <laughs> nice. Good job, man. Almost. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett, man, it's your turn. So Garrett, our other crew member, he's the stud. You know, he's got 0% body fat. He's this stud, doesn't really say anything. You know, he just flexes his bicep when he wants. Hey, I wanted to challenge him, too. I'm the cameraman. Oh, yeah. I think the cargo net was pretty easy for him, and he could literally reach the top with his arms. So, but watching him on the salmon ladder, Oh, you're in for a surprise. Oh, man. That's the kid. Go, go, go. Hey, have a So Kenny's doing a phenomenal job. You know, you can see you know, that it's not so easy. I mean, this guy is an amazing Seven. athlete. Six. He's fluent and just like a little ballerina up there. He's got, he's got a great smile on his face. He's killing the course. Three, dive, dive, dive. <laughs> uh, I'm stuck. You know, I used to be a diver as well, right? That's how you do it. My grip's burnt. It's that beta glue can lotion. I'm... <laughs> Kenny's at the end. Let's see if we can uh, get him to get all the way through this. I mean, this is a tough course, and he's uh, had a valiant effort here. I don't even need a big run, just a couple of steps. You see, this is how pros do it. Show off. <laughs> Woo, that was, that was good, that was hard. Mad respects to all the competitors out there doing it. I had a great time here. Next time I'm coming back, I'm training for this. And Bo, I'm gonna show you what's up. If you guys are ever in Orlando, make sure Old Town Extreme Ninja Challenge, make sure you guys come here and give it a shot. It ain't easy. I'm sweating. <laughs> ready, ready? Yeah, I'm ready to eat, let's go. Thanks, man. Yep, thanks guys.
I'm here at a park. We've got the UCF students. We've got many, many, many black belts from all over the states here visiting Master the Borio. He's gonna have one of these barbecues here every year. Award ceremony, recognition, just amazing time. We're here in Orlando with uh, Ricardo Laborio. He brought all of his lineage and all his people together. So super happy to be here. He's really like been like a father figure, mentor to me and you know my family, my little brother. He's a big part of my MMA career and he's one of the reasons I'm able to do what I love to do for a living, which is, you know, fight. It's like a family reunion, man. Just nothing but positive vibes and just come to the people you've trained with for years and just kind of see together, see them together, see all of us start growing a family, growing a business, see how everybody's doing. So it's a great group uh, opportunity for us to get together and just kind of just be positive with each other. I'm here because my maestre, Master Ricardo Laborio, told me to come here. And when you've trained in their Laborio, as long as I have, when he tells you to be somewhere, you're there. But the chances that he's actually gonna show up are 50-50. The fact that he's here, it's big. You gotta fall in love with the guy. His personality is vivacious, he's big, he's charismatic, and more than anything else, he just cares about people. He'll never forget you once he knows you once. You call it a jujitsu family. I train at a specific school, we have other schools here, but being that we're all in Orlando, we all train jujitsu, with Laborio being at the head of all that, it's pretty amazing. As he mentioned, the compassion and the love that he shares with his students and with his people, getting 30, 40 black belts from all over the states to be in one place at one time, world champions and leaders of the community, it just speaks for himself. I gotta tell you guys this, this is really was a, a dream come true for me from a long, long time. That everybody who is here right now, some way, somehow influenced my life and I, I have no words to thank you so much for being here today. You know, that what we are about is not just about the medals and trophies, it's all about what the jiu-jitsu represents to us. But beyond anything else, it's about the people. It really is. It really is about love. I just want to recognize some people here that have done it for the sport, maybe even more than a world high-level champion. So while I'm started, I'm going to pick out of this. I'm going to ask Luigi Fioravanti to come over here, Luigi. I knew he was doing an award ceremony for some of his black belts, and it was great to be part of the lineup. Dr. Adam, the real memorabilia of the sport, he really knows everything about it. If you want to know something about his sport, you talk to this man. Kenny Kin, come on, Kenny. Come on here, sir. Being around this guy for the whole week is it, not just inspiring, it's, it's life changing. His goal to transform this show and the most inspiring for, for the new guys, you know, for people that really needs to understand jujitsu is unprecedented in a quality too. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be amongst uh, all of you guys here today. And uh, I appreciate the love and, and the support. There you go. I was kind of surprised when he called my name out, but to be a part of this lineup, to be a part of this event that's something that i'm probably gonna live with the rest of my life knowing that hey i had an opportunity to do this i know that i love two things i love jujitsu and i love i love my family i'm in it to the end i want to come back here to the same spot get this whole thing full of mats and if one day when nine years old get the diapers walk in here and then do the same thing you know one more thing why we're different because we're spreading the love why are we different? Because we treat people the way we want to be treated. I tell this to my kids, that's the golden rule. Be kind, make people feel welcome, make them feel like they belong. That's it, that's what I have to say. Guys, stand up, stand up. All right, guys, feet together. All right, sit. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Spent about a week with Master Laborio, his students, his family, his team, his staff, his black belts. I feel like after spending the week with him, I feel like we have a newfound connection. I feel like we have the synergy that we can help each other with the goals that we have. Just this 
We are with the show. We want to reach as many people as we can to empower them. I think he has the same goal, just on a different project. And so hopefully here soon, we can connect together and uh, expand our minds and energy together to take this to the next level. I had a great time here in Orlando. I can't wait to be back. I'm going to cherish it forever. Booyah! Thank you to all the students at UCF for welcoming us with open arms. Thank you to Misty and Bella for allowing us to capture a glimpse of the incredible Laboyo family. And thank you, Master Laboyo, for showing me what it's like to be a great father, strong leader, and a true visionary.